Pas us start in the Okay, uh, and uh, before we begin, uh, just uh, again, my regular announcement about the bag outside. Uh, that's for plastic bottles and metal cans, uh, which are recyclable. Uh, recyclable. Blah, blah, blah. Recyclable. Uh, because uh, we can get back a deposit of that and uh, use it to buy a uh, jewel studded crown for the project leader or something like that. So, uh, I thought you were trying to encourage people to use the bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure they'll, 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 they'll get double I'm now. Not, I'm not sure a crown is kind of You can also put money into the bag. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> It'll get recycled. Yeah. <laughs> so, our next talk today uh, is about uh, custom. Uh, Debian Distributions uh, by Andreas Tiller, and I'll just uh, hand over everything to him yeah. now. Okay. Thank you very much. At first, I want to do some advertising for Fujitsu Siemens, who are not able to get me, uh, let me see my own screen, so I see uh, uh, exactly the same as you, and I have no s hidden secrets. That's why I'm standing here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I hope Wonky uh, managed to keep you awake after lunch and so I have a good base to um, have a nice talk to you. So, um, I, in principle, I'm just continuing the thing uh, we, we did before lunch in the round table talk and I want to present my ideas about custom distribution without getting interrupted by other people. So, at first, I want to talk about something in the past, what happened, a very short introduction. Then I want to give an overview what I think, what is the current state of Debian and, current, uh, and custom Debian distribution, the relation between both. And I want to present some ideas about the future of custom Debian distributions. So what about the history? At first we had Debian internal projects. The first one was, which was custom Debian uh, distribution related, was Debian Junior. It was just to make children happy and keep the work of installing the computer away from the parents. I like it very much. I'm very quick to install the computer of my son. So, fine. I just adopted this idea for medical applications in 2002 and in 2002, also Debian Edu started, but it was not the same as Scholar Linux is now, or Debian Edu is now. Because these internal projects became a little bit misinterpreted to be technical projects, like the one of embedded, uh, embedded Debian or whatever, we decided on uh, Debcon 3 to change the name. In, in this time, it was just, well, grouping packages into meta packages, making uh, things more visible by just uh, installing one package which has dependency and throws everything in. It was nice feature, but I think today we, today we are more. As I said, we had some kind of evolution. Two years ago at Tep, uh, Debcon 3, we decided we, we need some, well, differentiation between the more user-oriented custom Debian distributions regarding to the pure technical stuff. Embedded Debian is a target for a technical device, but a custom Debian distribution uh, targets to a special user group, which make, makes a big difference. So, um, in, in principle, at this time, we thought about a kind of technical cooperation between the existing custom Debian distribution. So we, we tried to implement some uh, common tools for Debian Junior, Debian Mate, Debian Edu, whatever, to, to just stop people reinventing the wheel. And this is remarkable, some forks from Debian we are coming back to Debian. For instance, at precisely this Debian Conference 3, 
it was, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, it was noted that um, Debian Edu was more or less dead. Um, nobody cared about Debian Edu, but there was a very vital project, Scholar Linux. We deserve them uh, major parts of the Debian installer and whatever. And so it was nice that these people just took over the Debian Edu effort. Just they became um, Debian Edu and so came back to Debian and are now residing more or less inside Debian. Also this uh, Demudi project. It was originated in a, um, a project which was sponsored by the Euro European Union. Union. It was the first free software project which was sponsored this way and they, they are just targeting to the multimedia artists to make a distribution which contains, contains just all the stuff uh, multimedia artists would need. So what are custom Debian distributions? They are applied to our users. What happens if a new user installs Debian? Well, he is faced by, well, 10,000, 15,000, whatever packages. What is the sense of it? If the user wanted to read all the package description, it would take him, what, three days, a week, whatever, and he wouldn't be able to understand half of the descriptions, including me. I, I do not understand every description uh, of packages in Debian, and so the user be just becomes frustrated. So. What about custom Debian distributions? Well, it is easy. You just think, well, it, I, have a, I have a known user, for instance, a schoolboy or a teacher or whatever, and we get a focus on Debian. We get a focus on Debian which just gets out all the stuff we do not need and just focusing on the interesting stuff. And so this, this lens, what you will see here, this is a custom Debian distribution, and it focuses on the, our users, which are in schools. The next example is Debian Med. Just if you are medical staff, take this lens, and you, you see clearly what is interesting inside Debian for you as a user with a special interest. And this way, it works, graphically spoken, for every special users we can support. We can support lawyers. We can, su uh, can support... Uh, also of, uh, people who are uh, doing geographical information system and whatever. The list is longer than I want to present here. You can read it up. I just want to explain the principle. So we have more than 10,000 packages and the users, which are our target users for custom data and distributions, need a defined subset of these packages. And our ma major goal is to make this subset uh, subset available for these people. So we know that there are uh, groups of specialized users and we find out what is the need of this special group. And the, the thing is that if you have specialized users, they are certainly not informaticians. An informatician can cope with uh, Debian as it is he would not be confused by the who he must because he knows the stuff he really uses. We have to um, make sure that, that our users who are really not computer experts find an easy installation and a configuration which works for them. So the main idea is not to fork Debian, but to make a separate, uh, not to make a separate distribution, but make Debian fit for the special purpose of the person who are doing this specialized stuff. So in, in my eyes, we have two basic things in, inside Debian. We have maintainers. Most people are maintainers. And I regard them as a missing link between the upstream authors, author and the user. In, for especially for specialized um, applications, upstream authors do know not much about usability and whatever. And users just are not possible to use these application because they do not know the internals, they do not know how to install, they do not know how to work with this package. And the Debian maintainer has a task to make 
the link between these both groups. And another interesting feature, in my opinion, is that Debian is kind of, well, it moves the, the principle of free software at distribution level. We are not, we are not just writing free software. We knew, use the principle to write free software, also to distribute free software. If you look at commercial dis, uh, distributors, they uh, bring, bring something in to, to just earn money. But we just try to define our own interests and bring our own trusted interests into the user space. What do I mean with this? I'm working in the field of medicine, so my own interest is to have a distribution which is fit for medical users. It is the same people who are writing a, a special application for medicine, write them at first point for, for their own use. They want to use it at their own, and the user is profiting from this. In the distribution, we do it also in, at first place for our own, and then we try to make it so good that also our users will gain profit from this effort. So, why should we include special applications into Debian? This is an interesting question, and I'm not personal, personally absolutely sure if it is good because Debian becomes larger and larger. We become even more packages if we include all these special applications. So, this is a point we should really discuss. I'm not really sure about it, but I'm a little bit bi biased. I think it is good. So the question is, we can discuss later on how many packages are good for Debian. On the other hand, we can bring those special applications under our quality control. Debian is well known for a high level of quality. So it is very often the case that, the, that these special applications do not have this high level and we can increase the level. If you ever deal with um, such kind of special ap applications like the, well, I say the better versions of practice management systems, you see they have a very, very low level of information science under the, under the hood. It works on the surface, but we have to increase these upstream programs by just bringing them under, under our control. And I know it uh, from my own experience the upstream authors are happy that we try to help them to make their software better. On the other hand, we can attract a wider user base. The user base of Debian is, is really huge. And so, if some specialized users just install Debian for their own purpose, whatever, and then they see, oh, there, there are some applications I could use also in my job, they are really good for me, then they sometimes notice stuff they wouldn't even notice if, if the applications hang around anywhere on the internet. And so we can attract a wider user base for these applications. So the question is, how many packages are good for our users? Because we are obliged to our users. Now, to a certain amount, I um, changed my talk after discussion last week on the mailing list and so I s bring in some ideas about the limits of growth in Debian. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm I have to go back, sorry. This is the, the advertising for the Siemens people. So we have a growth in Debian if you regard the number of people are working with it. It is the number of maintainers is increasingly growing. Well, we are not sure if this does really scale well. The same happens on package level. We have also, I mentioned it, no idea if it is really good to have more and more and more packages then the number of architectures is growing. There was a 
very interesting flame bar, how to cope with it. I, I, want to go, uh, I don't want to go into detail, but uh, maybe we just cut the number of arch detectors. Then the number of bugs is growing and growing. The number of users is growing. This is on one hand, this is good, but I just want to mention we, we have growth in several dimensions. The number of derivatives is growing. Some people like this, others might see problem inside it. And the time span between our releases is growing. Well, we hope that we can change this, but we should not only hope, we should do something for it. The good thing is that the numbers of attendees of DEPCONF is growing, so it's, this is a nice number, and the amount of money sponsored to DEPCONF is also growing, it's also a nice number. So I try to concentrate on the first seven points and the eight and nine points might help to solve one to seven. So here comes some kind of philosophy in the talk. Well, you know, perhaps I'm, I'm biased by the, the GDR education with Hegel and Marx and, and Engels and whatever. They, they found out that if you have a growing in quantity, there is a point in time where it changed to a new quality. And Trotsky found out it is very critical to find the point in time when this change happens. That you don't have from, from GDR. Yeah, okay. But that's why I... I <laughs> Yeah, sure. But I was referring to the first point. <laughs> oh, besides, it's nice to talk. Okay, but the problem is we have to find the, find the point in time once this growth in quality changes to uh, a growth in quantity changes to, to a new quality. And I really wonder if we just uh, are below this point. Um, I'm wondering if I hear some, some words of some fellow Debian developers. I have the two times here yesterday and today that Debian developers who are very long in the project, longer than me, and very interested uh, are just attending here to see whether Debian is worth continuing working on it. So if long living Debian developers are, have those ideas and think, well, is Debian worth working on it, or should we go to another project? Is Debian that what I was working for in, in the past? Uh, we have to, to think about this stuff, and we, we have to take it serious. And that's why it is a very sensible task to find out if we just uh, are be below this border, or if we, are, we, if we have a good chance to solve the problem. And so, the next thing is the Darwin principle. Something evolves by changing the quality. And so we, we, I think we have to try to evolve inside Debian and make uh, those uh, structural, structural changes that we can evolve in the positive direct, uh, direction and not to die out and got uh, out of the line by others. So in my opinion, uh, CDDs can deal with nearly all the di dimension of growth. And I want to explain why I think it w would work. So on the left side we have the problem and on the right side the CDD solution. Well, I've told you we have a number of growth of, uh, of the people, of the, the number of people grows. And if you take, uh, if you think about Debian as a as a substructural sub thing with several custom Debian distributions. We have smaller sub-projects. And so people inside these sub-projects can come, come closer together and work in smaller group, and so it's better control. We have uh, um, sub-project leaders who control their members of the groups. So we have the a growing number of packages. So in custom Debian distributions, you find some substructure uh, to make a closed package set. A closed package set in this sense that um, the, the, user now, uh, are the users are known and the packages are interesting for these users. And in the, in the consequence, we are making distribution for users and not for fun. The number of bugs is numbers of bugs 
is increasing. So how can this uh, help if you go the CDD approach? Um, in every CDD, you have certain people, and they look for a certain type of bugs. So if they find a stronger focus to the bug tracking system and feel responsible for a, a special type of bugs, it could be help to resolve at least the critical ones. We have an increasing number of users. For the custom, distrib uh, custom Debian distributions, these users are specialists with a known profile, and we know the needs of these users better than if we do a general distribution. We have a growing number of derivatives. So if we do reasonable customization, there would be no real need to derive in, in so many directions. Debian would be flexible in itself, and people could keep this stuff inside Debian. And regarding to the time span, we could think about just releasing closed set of packages, releasing just these custom Debian distributions. We can provide uh, separate packages files in, in our big pool, which relies on a common base, but just contains the applications most users of this um, scope really need. So in my opinion, this table is a good over overview of what is possible in principle. Well, now it's time for the technical people to implement these solutions. It's, it has to be a co community effort to make this happen. So now something about deriving from Debian. In my opinion, there uh, exist two main reasons to uh, derive. There may be commercial reasons. You can add something to Debian which, which can't be inside, like non-free stuff or whatever, so we can not do anything about it. They can take the free uh, part from Debian and just add what, what they need to add to go to the market, whatever. Non-free software, or if they think they need a, a shiny installer or, or whatever, no problem with that. Or uh, some service companies might need a certain brand. They just want to say, this is my brand, and you use it. But in principle, it's Debian with, with a nice cover around it. So these are commercial reasons to derive from Debian. Then there are also political reasons. If you are working for, for government or whatever, they need a nice flag or whatever, or uh, something else as a, as a background, and, well, this is our product. Yeah, they are free to use it, and this is also kind of rebranding, or sometimes you find projects which are granted. I um, mentioned the Demuti project. If they are granted by the European Union, they need the product to show them. This product is what is called the Moody, but in principle, it is Debian. It is compatible. It is fine. So these are, in my opinion, reasons to derive from Debian. What I would call a misconception about uh, Debian, which leads to der derivatives, would be it is impossible to work together with Debian. Well, there are many people who think uh, th uh, this way, and I have to admit they have reason to think this way. Because we have some maintainers who are really uh, uh, hard to work with. But this is something we have to face, and we have to target, and we have to find solutions. Then they think Debian is an inflexible beast, really huge, and you can't do some, some fi uh, fine configuration, whatever. But m my reason was uh, to use Debian and to become a maintainer because you can do something yourself. We have this duocracy principle inside Debian. The, the doer decides what happens. And if you think Debian is not fle flexible enough, enough, just do something to change it. It's your distribution, and you can do something to change what you do, don't, do not like. So what about the present? We have some grouping of packages, as I said. 
In these meta packages piece, the technical details I leave to, to formal talks or whatever, or ask me in private, uh, this is more a political talk, to get the idea. The meta, uh, the meta packages can contain depends, recommends, or suggests for packages, so it is this, this lens I showed you. This lens, this, each meta package is a lens to view on the package pool of Debian, just concentrate on the uh, things which are relevant for you. Maybe some conflicts, so you make some black spots, whatever. If it's necessary, I, I haven't faced the situation, but it might be. And then we have user menus. Uh, because um, we need some, some specialized users in these groups which have, which have different needs. So if you think of Scholar Linux, maybe the teacher perhaps might have a, a different menu from the pupils or the students. And so we have some roles to implement. And we have also some configuration issues. Um, why do I think that user roles, which are expressed in menus, are really important? Well, if you think on our users, which are no experts, which do not know what is installed on the machine, it is just simple. What's not in the menu, it's not on the machine, it's not visible. And that's why I think we should care for those menus for our user targets, target users. And we also want to reduce the menu to the interesting part. You know the Debian menu is, is very large and contains many interesting stuff, but it takes much time to find out which is really relevant to, to me, and that's why our target users should get only the, the menu which are interesting for them, and that's why a different shape of this lens as a focus on the interesting part. So just a side note, uh, you will not be able to read it. I explain it short. Are, uh, we have even users outside Debian. I just got an email by, by a user that uh, CDD dev package where I'm the auto from, uh, was not installable. He scrambled something up in his setup of a local mirror. And so I asked him, what, what's the problem? Was what, what did you on your machine? And well, he told me that he is installing a computer pool and just building some private uh, CDD packages for the use in, in different uh, classes of the room, and so uh, we we face the situation that people um, got the idea to substructure Debian and to make these substructures uh, available to their users. So even people outside got the, the idea of making custom dis Debian distributions, even if it's not is of, of wider use. The idea was accepted to have the subgrouping and substructuring. So uh, what is the problem if we try to adapt package configuration? Well, at first point, we have to rely on the package maintainer. That means we need some depth questions in a package to have clean configuration. So. Often it is fine, we can perfectly configure packages, but on the other hand, we have to cope with overworked, lazy or stubborn maintainers, whatever, who say, well, I'm not interested in this DEPCON question, I will not implement it. So, but now, what should we do from a custom Debian distribution point of view? In my opinion, here the answer is group maintenance of important packages. So. This group maintenance should contain, or this group of maintainers of these packages should contain people who are from different fields and are competent in different use cases. So they will be much more flexible in implementing the needs of the users. If we really not are able to convince the maintainer or the maintainer group 
Then we have one fallback, which is not nice, but well, we can walk about around it with CF engine. And so give the local administrator at least a helping hand to, to work with a change of configuration. So a new star on the CDD uh, sky is the custom DBR distribution to, uh, toolkit. It is currently developed uh, from some people in Valencia because my, uh, the CDD dev toolkit I developed has certain constraints and it does not really scale for all purposes and so there is a new development which um, deals a different way with these problems. For instance, they try to implement a uh, wrapper around apt and they store original config files to a separate place, install um, their own config file and on upgrades, which is a, the most critical problem, they redo the specific, specific configuration. And there's also some, some other, uh, there are also some, uh, some other ideas to replace the meta package approach by just installing the interesting packages in another way. This, this would be more flexible, but the meta package approach is also done, if you like. Yes? We ran across a similar situation at Progeny with, uh, with, with comp files because we wanted to be able to brand a distribution yeah. for our customers. And that means meddling with Etsy issue and Etsy issue.net. And the solution we uh, ultimately came up with was a kludge, which was to fork um, base files to mm -hmm. not mark those as comp files. Uh, the real fix, which I looked into and found out wasn't possible yet, would uh, be for diversions Mm. to work with comp files, but dpackage divert explicitly does not work with comp files. Mm. So that is a very specific technical piece of work that could be done that I think would assist with this kind of thing. Yeah, this would be interesting. Uh, I can I add just a little bit? Yeah. Sure. Uh, I believe actually what, what uh, was very quickly mentioned here about how the uh, CDD TK is doing a diversion is the diversion that you are uh, talking about. It's, it's a clever hack. Of doing no, the diversion it's, it's as a, a, it's a yes, no, yes. Have the package support it right. Sure, so, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Adapted both, to both the things we did yeah. essentially had the same consequence. They were essentially the same tech. We just implemented it different ways. But the right fix would be, mm -hmm. I think, to have dpackage divert support it. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is what what I mean with uh, the current state, and the future will be to fix this, to fix it the right way. So uh, the current state of documentation. Um, I have written a general CDD documentation, which uh, I'm, in the end of the talk, I point you to the link to this PDF and uh, underlined texts are linked so you can find it easily. Um, there should be some web tools. Currently, we have nothing. Um, there is a possibility to do some basic t things automatically. And the documentation is very different between CDDs. Well, doesn't matter if it's different, but it would really help, would really be helpful if we agree to some certain basic level to, to make our, our effort uniform. To, if, if users come to the website of Debian, they should easily find what's there, what can I use. Uh, currently, um, the custom Debian distributions are not really visible on our pages, and this should be enhanced. Uh, uh, sorry, I have a question yes. too. Uh, currently, is there any easy way to make a live CD? Because I can imagine that for many can, custom. Can, can I come back in, in uh, oh, some? Sure. I'm, I'm, I come okay. back to this. Okay. Yeah? One minute. We have this new generation toolkit, which is currently mm -hmm. developed uh, in Valencia, and this will replace um, the meta package build system and uh, do some alternatives which might be helpful. And it <coughs> contains some simple techniques, techniques for configuration, but this should be enhanced and not, well, more or less we have hacks and we need a real solution. We need a technical solution. Okay? <laughs> okay. So, thank you for the question. Um, 
regarding to live CDs and installers. Uh, my opinion is live CD is really nice to have. We, we need these. But um, in principle, live CDs are a perfect way to just show off, to show people, oh, I have this shiny one, put it in your box and show how good, uh, how good I am. This is important for marketing and, and advertising. But in my opinion, for real work, you need also a good installer. So we need both. And we have no tools to build live CDs. We need them. I hope we will get them in the sequence of, of our development, but currently there isn't anything. Yeah, there is somebody doing it, but the, the question was, is there? Yeah? It, is, it will be in the future, if, uh, when Hurt comes out. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Whatever. Yes? Sorry, question? Can we well, while, the, while the microphone is, is walking, I, I continue and then you interrupt me again? Okay? Or you can just repeat his question. Oh, okay. okay. Whatever. Um, we need installers who are like user just pressing enter. Well, this is the type of installers we need. Just pressing en enter uh, like the hen which uh, which picks on the enter uh, key, it's, it's a fine thing to have, and this way our users like it. So, your question? Hi. Uh, in Israel, we use live CDs for something like uh, um, taking advantage of all the hardware and using custom distributions, not by this infrastructure, mm -hmm. but uh, based on something like Morphix or Knopix. Yep and really making a distribution which is based only on nice CDs. Uh, you won't install it, but I'm not, I don't think it's just nice to have. It sometimes be a must. Uh, tell me a reason where you need, uh, must have in, in productive environment a live CD instead of a, a installed operating system. Maintenance. Yeah. Kiosk. What? Kiosk. A kiosk. <coughs> well, but you can you can have a net boot for a kiosk also. This okay yeah, good okay. Uh, the a kiosk system was, was a, a, the question. But well, I admit there are special cases really. But in general, <coughs> I think users want a rock solid installer. Live CDs are fine. Maybe I was a little bit shortcut. So I admit. But I think uh, if we have a reasonable live CD, it is really uh, worth having it, but the installer is, is the thing I would focus more on. Okay, my personal opinion. I might be wrong. Okay, okay thank you. Um, from our experience, especially in the education system, mm -hmm. people or students tend to ruin the computer and play with the settings and so on. So we prefer yeah, we to work from live CDs and we know but you can you can do a netboot and have disk-less computers with netboots. Just ask the Scholar Linux people. It's also a good solution, but we can't always uh, implement it. Okay. Thank you. Because the, the pupils are easier in, in what, well, whatever, playing, uh, putting a bubble gum in the CD uh, uh, drive instead of uh, well, uh, making the, the uh, network card uh, trouble or whatever. So I think it's well, whatever. So for the documentation side, we need a better web presence, as I said. And we could even do an automatically graphing the dep dependency map. What I mean with this, we, we uh, made it manually for the Debian made pages. You have all the things in these meta packages are listed in, in kind of to-do list. Sorry. They are, this is a color scheme which has a green uh, color for the included packages, a yellow, uh, um, color for the packages which are on our list outside Debian, we want to move to Debian, and a, a red to-do list for the packages we want to have into De moved into Debian to show the users we are here, we want we work for you, uh, join us, help us, and uh, this you can expect from our work. To, pay, to be visible over the net, if you are not visible in the net, then you are lost. 
So unified web pages and enhancing visibility, as I said. Then to the bug tracking system. The bug tracking system currently does also not really scale well. If I want to have an overview over all packages which are in the dependency list of my, say, medical imaging meta package, I'm lost. But I would like to check what is the problem in, in medical imaging as a whole. And so I can check the, the bug tracking system for single packages, but not for dependency list. But I would, have to, would like to have clean all the dependencies. We have also found some way to take, uh, to take the um, interesting packages in the work needing and prospective packages list, but it's also a hack. So we tr have to implement kind of a view to the uh, BTS as we do it to the package system. I have no idea how to implement it. I hope for recommendations. So we, we need an enhanced uh, CDD-centric view or interface to the bug tracking system. And we need user documentation, documentation, documentation. We need documentation and we need translation. Because our users are normally, if they are all over the world, they are not um, experts in, in informatics and we cannot assume that uh, they understand English. That's why we need translations. So structural uh, changes in, the, in Debian, I see, as I said, CDD might solve structural problems. We have to decide if I'm right or not. Maybe I'm not, but I hope that this talk might be helpful. We should try to fit the interests of, of our users. And I think custom Debian distributions can, might, can make Debian stronger if we do it in the right way. This is important. We have to find out what is the right way and we should follow it. And so, it is a quote from Enrico. He has always the same talk about the last final step about uh, towards total word termination. And well, thanks to uh, Enrico, I just adopted his uh, headline perhaps we, we can reach this final goal. So and I think I, I met it. If you are looking for the talk, you can either go to this URL or just Google for Andreas Tille Talks and you, you find it on the first hit. And there is this PDF document if you want to read it. And there is um, a quite large technical custom Debian distribution documentation at the same place. And now I think the uh, question session is open. So any more questions? Well, I had one observation too, yeah. that uh, um, anyway, uh, uh, one of the new features of DebBugs is going to be uh, tracking by release, yeah. you know, for uh, stable, unstable, and so on. Perhaps that could be extended a little further so that you might be able to have a tag for a custom, uh, yeah. you know, distribution or, yeah. so, or something like that. So, you know, that might be worth looking into. But uh, it, 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 in principle, it would be easy to implement. If you have so, we have this meta packages, just uh, stick to the example. It is called meta imaging, which depends from all medical imaging applications. And you have just to, to find out the list of dependencies and list all the uh, uh, bugs regarding these packages. So it is, the information is there. It just has to be implemented. Okay. Well, so are there any uh, final questions? Uh, if not, we can take a 10-minute break. Oh, oh, wait, we have a question over here. Sorry. Uh, can you explain in more detail what a Debian developer should uh, do to help the custom Debian effort? Well, I think um, the, uh, the general Debian developer uh, could try to make flexible package configuration um, for interesting packages. Maybe there is some, some effort in, in database programming that you need some special configuration. Just try to follow the the, the bug reports or the wishlist bug reports of the custom Debian distribution people. Then 
try to find out where you can help in the custom Debian distribution effort, what are your interests, your, your personal interests, and perhaps you find uh, a special field for yourself where you can help, be helpful or whatever. Do, are you thinking on uh, any special things? Oh. These this are my, my main things. Enhanced documentation could be everybody, not only developers. Um, okay, so uh, let's take a 10-minute uh, break before the uh, next session. And thank you, Andreas. Thank you. And I'd like to uh, remind everyone that uh, after the last session of the day, we don't have much time before we have to clear the building. So, uh, you know, try not to stretch it out, and please feel free to continue uh, outside. Uh, but we have to close up the building uh, on time.